So we do welcome our guests today, whether you're young or old or in between, whether you're here in person or you're online today. We're glad that you have come. Uh, last week was uh, we did Operation Christmas Child Boxes, and we have a picture of the kids who faithfully helped put those boxes in the van. I think the sun was shining in their eyes. It was a beautiful day, but thank you to the kids who were faithful to pack all those boxes and, and put them in the van, and we took them to the Bowling Green Baptist Church on Monday morning, and... Um, it was, it, was, it was just good. The whole thing was good. And I wanted to tell you that I had one person here, I, maybe somebody else did, but they registered their box online and paid for it online, their, their postage. And so when you do an online box, then you get to track your box and you get to see what country it goes to. So I'm going to follow up with that person and find out what country their box ended up in, which I think would be very interesting. So today we're going to have a time of prayer for needs during the service. So, um, you know, if you feel like the Holy Spirit's uh, nudging you to come get prayer, come and get it. God is good. He does things we never imagined. Bell ringing is continuing. One more Saturday to go to Rising Sun, which is December 2nd. We still have some openings. So you are free to sign up at the information table. And remember, these donations help people in our area. You don't all know that what all Pastor Ron does uh, concerning the Salvation Army, but he also asks businesses to contribute to the Salvation Army. So he gets contribution from businesses, and we usually end up with a really nice amount that we're able to contribute to the Salvation Army. Uh, just a reminder that there's not going to be any raw Bible study in December. Now, this Wednesday, we were going to have John and Gloria Trestle from France be with us to share. And we don't know why, but they have to leave the country on Tuesday, so they aren't going to come this Wednesday. So what's going to happen instead, you can either go to Bible study at Pastor Ron's, or there is going to be a service at the Chouse. And if you like goodies, Christmas goodies, or whatever kind of goodies you like, um, there will be plenty of them after the service. So even if you come to our Bible study, you can go to the Chouse afterwards and enjoy the goodies. So... Talking about goodies, we would like to serve Christmas cookies at our children's Christmas play. So I'm counting on you guys to show up with some cookies. And that always seems to be a nice way to share with other people at Christmas time, and they all seem to enjoy it. So if you would think about what kind of Christmas goodie you would like to bring, we would appreciate it on December 17th. Is that right? It's in the handout. I don't have a handout with me, but it's in your handout, the date is, in case I missed it, December 17th. Okay. Okay, I think that takes care of our announcements for today, so the children are dismissed to line up at Kids Church and go over to the other building. Thank you. If we could have the ushers come forward, we're going to go ahead and take up our offering. When I'm when I'm when we're done taking up the offering, I'm done praying. We're gonna, I'm gonna this morning. I'm gonna share my message first, and then we're gonna uh, have a time for prayer during worship. Worship will be last. We'll have a time of uh, prayer, and uh, so when I'm done and I start preaching, Jeremy and the the children from the fifth grade to high school that want to go back with them to this room back here, they're free to go back when I'm when I'm done uh, praying. I want to keep in prayer um, Chuck Neitz. This is Rex's brother. Um, he had a stroke on was it yesterday. I kind of lost track of I mean, it. He just had a stroke, and it's very severe. They are not sure he's going to, um, how long he's going to live. Uh, he's a short time, it looks like. So we want to keep him and the family in prayer. Um, a praise report, Bella has uh, come through her tonsillectomy real well, and she's here this morning back to normal. So thankful for that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, that we can come and we can gather together. And Lord, we thank you that you're with us. Lord, we just pray that you just uh, minister to us today. Lord, help us to hear from you, to receive from you. Lord, help us to have ears to hear and eyes that see. Lord, we thank you for your word and for your faithfulness to us. 
Lord, we pray you be with Chuck Neitz's family. Lord, just fill us, be with them. Lord, just comfort them through this time. Lord, just let them know your presence there with them. Lord, just watch over them and just keep them close to you. Lord, we thank you for being with Bella and that everything went well through her surgery, that she's back to normal. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and for just taking care of us. Lord, we just thank you for your blessings. Thank you for all that you do for us. And Lord, we thank you that we can give back a part of what you've blessed us with. So Lord, just receive our offering now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning I'm going to I'm going to share a little bit. I want to share and just think about the fact that God is with us. You know, uh, when they gave Jesus some of his names, you know, he has a lot of names. One of the names they gave him was Emmanuel. Emmanuel. He used to be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. And what does that mean to us? You know, what does that mean? God is with us. You know, when is he with us? In the Bible, in Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 20th verse, it says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So we know that when two or three, which we're ahead of the game this morning, you know, we've we've got more than two or three, so we're in pretty good shape. But two or three, when two or three are gathered, he promises that he's in the midst of them. And You know, that's not only just when we're together, but we're also reminded that he's always with us. He said he'd never leave us or forsake us. So when we gather, one of the things we need to remember to do is we gather, not just to gather, but we gather in his name. And I think that's so important, so important. It's in his name we gather. It's not in my opinion. You know, God said, I am who I am. I'm not who you think I am. He said, I am who I am. And I think it's so important that we remember who he is. Who is he? Who is he? Who does he say he is? And then we acknowledge who he is. You know, and I thought about a few of the things. You know, he says he's holy. He's a holy God. Sometimes I think we lose that sense of holiness. You know, that God says he's separated. He's different. You know, he's not, he's not, like us. He's different. He's holy. And then he says, and we are to be holy. We are to be holy as he is holy. He is absolutely pure. Absolutely pure. Absolutely perfect. You know, he's not like I think he ought to be. One of the things I, I've just really been on my heart lately is, you know, I think we've in many ways, we've made God in our image. And we've decided, we've decided how we think God ought to be. This is how I think. It doesn't matter what I think. God doesn't care what I think actually about who he is. He said, I am who I am. And then I have to then find out who he is. And I have to accept that. And I have to take him for who he says he is. Sometimes we even have trouble accepting that he's a good God. You know, and I think that's sometimes is a big issue. I think he loves us more than we actually realize. That I think, oh, I don't see why he would love me. You know, wow, I just messed up this week. He must be really mad at me. You know, I think we don't realize how good he is. How loving he is. You know, and he's almighty. He's almighty. He's got all the strength and all the power. You know, so many times we get like, oh, I don't know, this is, looks terrible. I don't see how this is going to work. I think we're in trouble. And he says, no, I'm almighty. I'm, so I want to look to him. I want to look to him. When I look to myself, I kind of think I'm in trouble. You know, if I look to him, then I can, okay, it's okay. God's in charge. And he's so loving. You know, he's loving. He's sacrificially loving sacrificially. He gives, he gives of himself. And he gives when we don't deserve it. That's something so hard for us to comprehend. Because that's not how we do it. You know, we love when people treat us right. I especially love when people treat us right. You know, I especially love when people are nice to me. And then God says, 
Well, how about if you love your enemies? Oh, man. Wait a minute. Love my enemies? That's a stretch. But they don't deserve, oops, but they don't deserve it. Oh, the Bible says when we didn't deserve it, God loved us. And so I'm asked to love like he loves. And then he's so caring and compassionate. You know, he cares about us. He cares about us. He pays attention. He's with us. He's with us. So this morning, I want you to really focus. One of the things is he's with us. He's with us. You know, I always think, what would change if we could see him? You know, I said he's with us, and we all go, yeah, yeah, he's with us. You know, we, we agree, you know, because that's what the Bible says, and that's what I just got done saying, so everybody agrees. He's with us. What if all of a sudden we could see him? I'm telling you, everything would change. Everything would change. And what I'm reminded of is, then it should be that way even when I don't see him. Because he said, I'm with you. So my expectation should be the same whether I see him or not. He is with us. In Psalms 34, verses 17 to 18, it says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears. And he delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. The righteous cry out. What kind of a cry is that? That's a cry that's, help! Help! I'm in trouble. I don't know what to do. It looks bad. I don't see an answer. The righteous cry out. And the Lord hears. He hears us. He hears us. And he delivers us out of all of our troubles, and he's near to the brokenhearted. He's near to the brokenhearted. I think that he wants to remind us that, you know, even when we're at that place of just feeling just so down and broken, that he's near to us. Because it's at those times when it doesn't always feel like he's near. It's at those times when, oh, man, it's so bad. It, I don't, it doesn't feel like he's around. People say things like, well, I pray, and it doesn't seem like anything happens. I pray, and I can't feel anything. And so he reminds us that he is near, and he's especially near in our time of our biggest need, that he's near. He's there. He's there. In James, the fourth chapter, the eighth verse, it says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. You know, we have some responsibility. We have, we have some responsibility. He says he's near, but then he says, but you have to draw near to him. You know, I think God can be right beside us, and we don't even know it, and we don't pay any attention, and we don't draw near to him, and so we get nothing. We get nothing. But when we draw near to him, then he is near to us. I believe God always has his arms open. But we have to draw near to him and we have to step in. I've, I've told it before, but when I grew up in the church, I grew up right beside the, the pulpit was a, a big, uh, it wasn't a painting. It was, well, it was probably painted on, anyway, it was huge. And it had a picture of Jesus at the door knocking, you know. And, you know, I can remember, you know, I was told over and over, that door has no doorknob. It has to be open from the inside. You know, the picture was that he was near, he was knocking, but the door only opened from the inside. We had to draw near to him. We had to open the door. We had to allow him to come in. He doesn't force his way through the door. You know, we draw near to him. We draw near. And, and that's really important at times. You know, 
Um, you can get to places and you can get to a bad spot and things are tough. And if you don't draw near to him, you might say, well, how do you do that? Well, you get serious about prayer. You know, sometimes we're not always serious. Did you ever, did you ever notice that? Do you ever notice when you get in a hard time, you get a little more serious? You know, it's like, I feel a little more desperate. Wow, this is serious. And, you know, we don't say this, but if we do, but, you know, maybe I should pray. <laughs> it's almost, you know, like all of a sudden. But, you know, it's that sense of, wow, this is serious. And I need, to, I need to draw near to him. I need to pay attention. I need to listen. I need to pray. I need to fellowship with him. I need to read his word. I need to draw near. Draw near. You know, you can be here in, in a time of worship. You know, we're going to worship in a little bit. And you can be in a time of worship. And did you ever find yourself singing the words and thinking about something off there somewhere? Or thinking about what's going to happen later on. Or thinking about what happened yesterday. Or think about why didn't somebody smile at me this morning? Why didn't somebody, somebody walked right, somebody walked right by me this morning and didn't say anything. You know? You're not going to draw near if you're doing that. You know, you, you're just not going to draw near because you're, you're out somewhere else. And then when something's over, maybe it's over, it's like, Oh, what happened? Well, sometimes we missed it. We missed it. So when we worship, we, we want to draw near. We want to we wanna focus. We want to seek him. We want to be honest with him. I think a lot of times we just need to be honest. Lord, I'm hurting. I'm having a hard time. This is a struggle. I need help. Help me. You know, it says the righteous, they draw near. And he's near the broken heart. He's there for us. But we have to draw near to him. And who's the one that we're drawing near to? Who's the one that we look to? In Hebrews, the 13th chapter, the 8th verse. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Yesterday. When Yesterday, you mean just yet? No. That means from here all the way back. All the way back. You know, from this, from this point, from here all the way back, from where we are, all the way back through all of history, all of time. Jesus Christ is the same all the way back. He's the same today, right where I'm at. And he will be the same all through the rest of time. He never changes. He never changes. Because, you know, one of the reasons he never changes, he knows who he is. Remember, he said, I am who I am. So there's no reason to change because he knows who he is, and he's not changing. He's not changing. So what does that mean for us? Well, then I can look back, and I can see what God has done. And we talked about, you know, in the one song this morning, you know, we look back, and we can see his faithfulness. You know, we can see what he has done. We can see things he has done. And that reminds us that he will do that today because he doesn't change. He doesn't change. The only variables are you and me. You know, and maybe circumstances. Things, things that happen. That changes. You know, that changes. It's not always the same. Mary and I, we talk a lot about, wow, it's never the same. You know, sometimes we like things to stay the same. But I think in reality, things will never stay the same. They're always going to be changing. And that's why God says, I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we put our confidence and our trust in him. Not in me, not in you. Because we change, you know, not in circumstances. They're always changing. Not in other people. You know, it's always changing. So we put our trust in him because he changes not. 
He changes not. In Malachi, the third chapter, the sixth verse, it says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. He talked about when they deserve to be consumed, and he didn't consume them because God doesn't change. He doesn't change. I am the Lord. I do not change. So don't try to make him change for you. Accept him who he, for who he is. Who he is. And who is he? Who, who's this one that we're, we're accepting? How do, I, how do I know, you know, what I'm getting into? Or how do I know for sure that I can even know? Well, again, I think it's important that we don't make him in our image. We take him for who he is. Okay? Because this is, this is where I think a lot of people stumble. They start to think, well, this is what I deserve. This is what God's going to do. Or I don't think God's going to do because I don't think God does that. Or whatever you think. Remember, it doesn't matter what you think. The Bible even says we're to have the mind of Christ. It never says your mind's okay. It says we need to have the mind of Christ. We need to think like him. And that's a real stretch, folks. You know, we kind of say that, well, yeah, but I'm telling you, that's a stretch. Because that's a faith thing. Now we're talking about faith. Now we're talking about believing something I can't always see. Can't always see. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things I can't see. How can faith give me evidence when I can't see it? What kind of evidence is that? Well, it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. So in Acts, the 10th chapter, the 34th verse, Peter, Peter's uh, preaching, and he says, he op Peter opened his mouth and he says, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is the Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all of Judea, it began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. God anointed him. God said, hey, it's okay. He's my son. God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power. He gave Jesus the Holy Spirit and power, just like he gives you and me the Holy Spirit and power. Isn't that something? Wow. Believe that for a while. See, we go, wow, I don't know. See, right away, my mind says, well, I can't have that same power that Jesus had. Well, it says that he had the Holy Spirit and power, and it says we're going to get the Holy Spirit and power. Do you think God, what, he's lying? You know, just, just think about sometimes how we, how we make him in our image. And he says, and then he went about doing good. Wouldn't it be a great thing on your gravestone? Joe Smith, he just went about doing good. That's some just went about doing good. Wherever he went, wherever he went, just went about doing good. Didn't matter where he went, he went wherever he went. He didn't worry about where he went, just wherever he went, he went about doing good. Wouldn't that be wonderful if people would say that about us? Oh, they just went about doing good. And that's what it says. It says, he just went about doing good. And he healed all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. He healed. He healed. And it doesn't say he healed a few times. It doesn't say he healed once in a while. It doesn't say he healed part of the people. I don't know why, but it, I know why. But it says he healed them all. He healed them all. Think about that. He healed them all. Now, if somebody studies their Bible and you know what the Bible says, you would tell me, yeah, but there was a time in Nazareth when he had trouble. And that's absolutely true. He went to Nazareth, his hometown, 
And they said, who is this son of a carpenter? I don't know. I saw him out building stuff with his dad. I don't get I don't think he could do that. And the Bible says that he couldn't heal very many because of their unbelief. Most of the time, the Bible will say he healed them all. But it says that if you have unbelief, that will hinder the process. Doesn't say God's got a problem. It says we got a problem. Because I don't think he is who he says he is. See? I make him in my image. Well, I don't think. Well, you know, I've lived a long time. Mary talked about living a long time. Well, you know, I lived a long time. I've seen a lot of stuff. Do you know living a long time and seeing a lot of stuff can hinder your faith? I mean, you know, it can be a positive, like she was talking about. It can also be a negative. It's like, yeah, but I remember oh so-and-so. You know, we always want to go to somebody that we knew that had something, had a hard time, and look what happened to them. Why is it we'll go to something that happened to somebody instead of going to the Word of God? Isn't that interesting? So we let, we let something else, which we probably don't know all the things that happened, we don't know all the details, and we'll let that determine what we believe as opposed to the Word of God. Just interesting. Interesting. So he went about. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what Jesus did when he walked the earth, he will do now. Same. No different. No different. He cares about us. He loves us. He's near to us. So we draw near to him. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw near. We're going we're gonna to have a time. Uh, you got, the worship team can go ahead and get ready. Um, they're going to go up and they're going to lead us in worship. You can worship. You can draw near. You don't need me to pray for you. Um, you know, but I'm here to pray for you. And Mary's going to come up. And we're going to pray for you. Okay. Sometimes drawing near means doing something. You know, I, if you feel you need to come up. I'm also going to make house calls today. <laughs> Table calls. Somebody requested that they didn't feel like they could get up and uh, strength to get up front. I said, well, I'll make a call. So I think what I'm going to do is when we stand up to worship, the first ones I'm going to call is I'm going to go back and, and pray for those folks. That way I won't get caught up praying for other things and forget, which can happen. But um, I'm going to pray for them. So, you know, one of the things I think we need to really be sensitive about, you know, God isn't tied to what I think. And he's not tied to how I think it ought to happen. So, you know, we got to stay, I don't know if the right word's flexible. We got to stay sensitive, I guess, as we draw near to him that, you know, we do what he says. That's, that's not easy. That's not easy. But I find that if I desire to do what he says, that, you know, I'll get a lot closer than if I want to just do it my way. I'm not always, you know, I'm, I, I think we need to be honest and say, well, you know, sometimes we miss it. You know, I don't think God goes, well, shame on you. You missed it. You know, I think he said, hey, try again. You know, sometimes we miss it. And we try to be sensitive. We try to do what we think he's saying. And we do our best. But if we're honest and really do seek him, I think he then understands and he understands where we're coming from. You know, he cares about us. He cares about us. He loves us. So let's all stand. And uh, they'll, they'll go ahead and start us in worship. And then uh, we're going to go pray. And we'll come back up. So don't think, oh my goodness, where'd they go? We'll, we'll be back.